This is Steve Wright for YUV Soft with a tutorial on the Stereo Generator Node Basics. In the last tutorial, Depth Propagation for Foreground Objects, the Stereo Gen Node was introduced. In this tutorial, we'll see how to adjust the Stereo Gen Node parameters for optimal stereo generation to lower costs by reducing the need for clean plates and stereo paint. The Stereo Gen Node is part of the 2D to 3D suite. Given a source clip and its depth map, it generates both left and right views. Generating both left and right views has two big advantages. First, it avoids the differences between the look of the left and the right views resulting in a more comfortable stereo viewing. And second, it reduces the amount of revealed background areas resulting in less need for clean plates or stereo paint. Okay, I'm going to rehome the viewer and we'll move over here to take a look at the next part. The previous tutorial showed how to quickly develop the depth map using only one depth propagation node and a single layer rotomask. The micro relief introduced by the depth propagation node prevents that flat cardboard cutout look. Okay, I'll rehome the viewer and now we'll move over here to see how to adjust the parallax and the zero levels. I'll open up the stereo gen node into the property bin and here we'll see how easy it is to generate a stereo pair with a stereo gen node. The only elements you will normally need are the source clip, its depth map, and a stereo gen node. Often, all you need to do is dial in the parallax and zero level parameters you want for a great stereo effect. With the stereo gen node's automatic depth correction, there's often no need for manual work such as roto masks, depth map painting, or stereo painting. To show you the parallax adjustments, I'm going to turn on an anaglyph display, and I hope you've got your anaglyph glasses handy. Parallax specifies the maximum disparity with 100 representing 1% of an image width and 200 representing 2% and so on. So if I adjust the parallax from the default of 100 to 200, you can see the scene instantly takes on a much greater depth. I'll toggle that for you. 100, 200, 100, 200. High quality cinema with deep 3D effects can have a parallax greater than 150 which is 1.5% of the screen width. Some will even have a parallax of 200 or 2%. Larger parallax values obviously result in more revealed background areas. The stereo gen node effectively fills in these areas by stretching the pixels, but if overdone, it can result in a glass rod effect around the edges. For high quality cinema releases using large parallax values, a clean plate for the background may be used. Upcoming tutorials will demonstrate the use of these clean plates. Okay, I'll rehome the viewer. The next adjustment is the zero level, so I'm going to turn the anaglyph back on to show you that. The zero level sets the screen plane. The number here represents what code value of the depth map will be seen at the screen plane. Depth map values greater than this will appear in front of the screen, and values less than that will appear behind the screen. If I put my cursor on the screen, you can see it's right on the screen plane. But if I pass it over the man, you can see that our man is actually in front of the screen by quite a bit because the zero level is set for 127.5. I'm going to set it to a more appropriate value. And now as I pass the cursor over the screen, you can see the man is now behind the screen where he should be. To show you the interlaced option, I'm going to turn off the anaglyph node. Another very important feature of the Stereo Gen node is the interlaced output option. It generates an interlaced output compatible with any standard 3D monitor with an interlaced 3D viewing mode. You can simply drag a viewer tab over to the 3D monitor and view your stereo adjustments in real time. With instant feedback and no need to render, it's a real productivity booster. Here's a tip. Be sure your viewer zoom factor is 1 to 1 to avoid filtering the interlaced scan lines. This would ruin the stereo effect. Once the parallax and zero parameters are set, we can inspect the generated stereo pair for any remaining problems, then dial them away with a few additional stereo gen settings. We'll take a look at that next. Simply setting the parallax and zero level will often produce a satisfactory stereo conversion. When problems remain, most of them can be corrected simply by properly adjusting a few of the advanced features of the Stereo Gen node to eliminate the need for manual fixes or depth map or stereo paint. 
I've attached a stereo gen node here to my picture with no adjustments at all, and you can see that I've got some serious artifacts along this side of the face. Now these artifacts are going to completely disappear with a properly adjusted stereo gen node, which I have right here, this guy. Here you can see both the left and the right views have beautiful clean edges, and we have a lovely stereo pair. While there are several adjustments that can help with problems, the first thing to try is the Smart Depth Map Dilation, or SDMD. Inaccurate borders in the depth map that don't match the object borders in the source video will introduce edge artifacts. Much of this can be corrected simply by enabling SDMD, which will dilate or expand the depth map to better fit the source video. As I toggle the SDMD option on and off, you can see the dramatic contribution it's made to cleaning up our edges. Areas that need dilating are where the depth map is smaller than the source object, or where there are soft edges due to depth of field or motion blur that might not be properly covered by the original depth map. Smart Depth Map Dilation is a smart dilation operator that analyzes the edges of the source video and the depth map, making adaptive corrections to the depth map only where needed to make it more consistent with the source. It operates only on the foreground without affecting any background areas. The automatic artifact correction in the stereo gen node often eliminates all handwork dramatically decreasing development time for a shot. It can save even more money by reducing the need for clean plates and stereo paint. The show edge mask toggle enables the edge mask feature which assists you in visualizing your SDMD settings by marking where they will affect the picture. This edge mask shows you two things, where it will dilate the depth map and by how much based on its thickness. Adjusting the SDMD options while watching the edge mask will help you to make good decisions about your SDMD settings. I'll rehome the viewer. In addition to viewing the edge mask in the alpha channel, you can also set the nuke viewer to the matte overlay node so you can see your edge mask right on top of your original clip. I'll rehome the viewer and go back to the alpha channel. The edge mask is used to identify what parts of the picture will get modified, since just viewing the changes in stereo can be too subtle to notice. Keep in mind that if the edge mask is set too wide, it can create that glass rod effect. Here's a workflow tip. You can render out the edge mask, then refine it with paint or roto and plug it back in at the stereo gen node's mask input. Next. We'll take a look at a second depth map dilating tool that can be used in conjunction with smart depth map dilation. Depth map preprocessing here offers another depth map dilation tool that can be used alone or in conjunction with the smart depth map dilation we just saw. It's called Dilate Depth Map or DDM and allows you to set depth map dilation in X horizontally separately from Y vertically. Here are the key differences between smart depth map dilation and dilate depth map. Smart depth map dilation is local, analyzing the source video and the depth map edges to dilate only where needed, and it only dilates horizontally. Dilate depth map, or DDM, is global, so it affects the entire depth map without comparing it to the source video and can be set separately for both X and Y. Since SDMD only dilates horizontally, if vertical dilation is needed, then DDMY is the solution. So at this point, the SDMD has been enabled, and if we look at our picture, we can see we have some artifacts. And you can notice some artifacts right here along the nose, in front of the lip, and right underneath the lip here. Now the SDMD cleared most of the problems, but we still have this little residual, so I'm going to come down to the Dilate Depth Map X and set that for 1. Watch the viewer. I click on that, and some of the artifacts have gone away. Here, let me toggle that for you. On, off, on, and off. Now we still have some artifacts underneath the nose here and underneath the lip here, so we could use a dilate in Y to fix that. So I'll come down to the depth map Y dilation and add a 2, and watch them disappear when I set that. Boom, gone. And down here, let me toggle that on and off for you. Undo, redo, 
undo, redo. Used alone, DDMY dilation usually only needs values of 0 or 1, but when combined with SDMD, the DDMY value can be as high as 2. Always use SDMD first, as it's smart and will introduce the fewest artifacts, then add DDM only when needed. Keep in mind that excessive depth map dilation can cause that glass rod effect at the edges. When using SDMD, you already have some horizontal dilation, so DDM X values greater than 1 can introduce artifacts. In this video, only basic stereo gen dilation techniques have been shown, but future videos will offer demonstrations of how to use the smooth edge strength option, which provides even more stereo correction options.